I'm Matthew Weinstock with a look at the April issue of Hospitals and Health Networks. In the cover story, writer Joseph Burns analyzes the challenges hospitals will face as bundled payments become more widespread. While most experts see merits in moving toward a new reimbursement model, many providers and hospitals are actually unprepared to make that transition. Here's managing editor Bill Santamore with a closer look. Our April cover story about bundled payment asks whether this new reimbursement model is a gift for hospitals or a Pandora's box. Turns out it's a little of both. Under bundled payment, a hospital and physicians assume the financial risk for delivering care for one price for one patient episode over a set period, usually 30, 90, or 120 days. Most bundled payment programs today are for acute care episodes, such as hip or knee replacement or spine or cardiac surgery. Some health plans are making bundled payments for chronic conditions like asthma, diabetes, and cancer. One person in our article calls bundled payments incredibly effective in transforming care because they focus providers on areas where there are unwarranted variations and realizable savings and they bring alignment with physicians that allow hospitals to cut their variable costs and reduce post-surgical complications, pharmacy costs, and length of stay. But as our writer Joseph Burns found out, setting a bundled payment on an episode of care will be very complex for most hospitals. Administrators and their physician partners will have to collect reams of patient data, spend hours identifying best practices, and develop teams of clinicians to run these programs. The good news is that once successfully implemented, bundled payment programs can be a marketing tool to attract health plans, patients, and even physicians. Next up, staff writer Marty Stepniak talks about a special section he produced on how hospitals can improve the patient experience. So this month's Gatefold takes a closer look at what hospitals are doing to take the next step in improving the patient experience. Uh, While a lot of providers have made great strides in this area, some have struggled to sustain those changes. Uh, One of the strategies we explore involves moving away from a sort of conveyor belt model of care where the patient just moves along a line from provider to provider with no real coordination to a more team-based approach with the patient right at the center. It's also important for hospitals to look beyond the measures spelled out in the HCAP survey and focus on things like minimizing avoidable disruptions or working harder to involve the patient's family. A key point we kept hearing is that providers can't confuse optimizing the patient experience with making the patient happy or satisfied. It's more about respect and reducing anxiety and suffering and coordinating care from the first phone call to the last visit. Also in the April issue, we have an exclusive interview with Dr. Benjamin Chu, chairman of the American Hospital Association Board of Trustees. Dr. Chu says that hospitals are making progress in transforming the delivery system and he urges lawmakers to take a long-term view rather than seek short-term budget fixes, which he says could derail efforts to improve care and lower costs. For those stories and much more, be sure to check out the April issue of HNHN. I'm Matthew Weinstock. Thanks for tuning in.